Savage. That will put him in a safe position to let his combinations go. Beautiful right hand. And the chance gets to him. Get over there. Just like that. Get over there. Terrence Bud Crawford hits the six. Seven. Hey, come to me. Come to me. You all right? Yeah. Give you a chance. One of the best closers in the game. 27 knockouts in his career. Do we have 28 left here? This fight is also fair. This is a time to close it. No, 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 no. no. And he stares him no. down. Okay. No, no. With his family here, his wife Isha, Miss Deborah, his mom, he does it again. Slow start back. Yours is too, fuck. Right now, I had to shoot. Like, goddamn, you like good distance. Good distance, man. Thank you, sir. Yeah, good shot. Thank you, sir. I want to have a bit of fun. Good timing, man. You, uh, yeah, you can pop as well, obviously. I told you. I think the timing is more than the pop blood. You know, you obviously got great timing. Okay guys, welcome to another one of my videos. So you can see the uh, the image on the video right now. You probably think, oh, here we go again. Another guy attacking a member of the LDBC. Leave the LDBC alone. No, it's not necessarily like that. But I am going to confess that I, that I am exploiting this video. But I'm not playing it. I'm not going to play it. Okay, we all know what it's going to be about. We know where his point of view lies. There's no point in going over it again. It is what it is. We shouldn't expect the person like Fanon to change his method. It seems to be um, profitable for him to employ this method and go about things the way he does. I, I honestly believe that there must be some sort of pathology behind it. I don't think it's normal. I don't think it's normal at all, but I'm not an expert in that field. So here it is. So what am I doing with this video then? I mean, like I said, I'm not going to manipulate anything I see here. I'm not going to use it, but I am going to exploit it, but not in the way that you think. I'm not going to play him, play his words and listen to what he has to say. Not in the least bit. What occurred to me is this, on this occasion, regardless of how many uh, thumbs up and thumbs down he's got, and he's got quite a significant amount of thumbs down there, and that actually reflects something that um, that you don't see much of when it comes to Fanon and his audience and the people that follow Fanon, okay? But you see the title, it says, wow. They always have to put that wow, don't they? Because, you know, it sensationalizes things and, you know, it's, it's a sort of subliminal clickbait. But, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I do it from time to time, maybe once in a blue moon if I just want to drag so I understand the use of it though it sensationalizes and people just love sensationalist bullshit on YouTube because as I said a lot of people on YouTube are fucking messy people they just love mess I can make a serious video it'll probably get like 15 views but if I make a video in the same vein as for non here just being as ridiculous as God knows what then it, I, I, probably, I probably would see a lot of traffic come by. I, I, I don't think I could live with myself like that, man. I, I don't know. It's just not me. But anyway, Terrence Crawford destroys Kell Brook in four rounds. Doesn't look ready for Spence and Porter. And then, of course, he's just asking the question, you know. Doesn't look ready for Pen <laughs> That's what he does, you know. Now, could you call it clever or you could just call it bitch made? Or could you just call it skeptical? Or could you just call it just, just, uh, you know, snake-like, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know, I Emmy, mean, I'm not trying to force your way or your point of view or your perspective either way. It's just that I see it the way I see it, knowing the type of person that Fanon is. And this is just my opinion. I think it falls in a category that has nothing to do with being objective. You know, and that being said, so why are we here? We are here because of the thumbs down and the thumbs up, which is 350, obviously. We could suggest that that's four times the amount, approximately four times the amount of uh, thumbs down. Actually, what am I talking about? One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa. 
about seven times the amount, uh, four times the amount, my ass, about seven times the amount of uh, thumbs, thumbs up. All right. You know, I mean, I wasn't looking properly and that's why I had to count my fingers <laughs> for that maths equation. <laughs> Forgive me. All right. It is what it is. Anyway, what's he written here? It says, Terrence Crawford knocks out Kel Brook in four rounds to retain his 147 pound WBO championship in what could be the last fight of his time with top rank. Crawford gets his best win over an apparently shot apparently shot Kel Brook. Okay. That said, let's see more. That said, he took Brook out faster than either Brook's other conquerors. Either of Brook's other conquerors. Conquerors. How dramatic. All right, 261 comments thus far. Obviously, I'm not going to comment on there. This one's got 72 thumbs up, 31 thumbs up. So there's quite a few. And this is what I want to point out here. It seems on this occasion, a lot of his audience do not agree with this point of view. And they're pointing out something that has been quite evident for quite a while. Now, I'm going to try and employ some brevity when I talk about, um, when I use this video. Okay. And when I go into the comments themselves. All right. How long we, we spent? Eight, oh, spent five minutes thus far so it's okay so let's get into it shall we we're going to read the comments and what i'm going to highlight is the fact that a lot of people do not agree with his assessment and i think they're being rather subtle and i don't even understand i don't really know whether it's really worth making this video because it's not going to really change anything is it it's not really i mean it's not going to uh, force fanon to indulge in some form of introspection i don't think he's capable of that it is what it is. Um, I think it's a very, very, uh, uh, well, I'd like to say dangerous, but he's also a weak individual. So you've got to be, you get just got to be careful around people like Fanon. Fanon is, uh, Fanon's terrible, actually, to be honest with you. And then moving on, it says, I see a lot of people saying Kelbrook is washed up, but nobody said that before the fight. So, here we see about 31 replies to that and then 72 thumbs up okay you know what i mean so i'm guessing that's a side shot at fanon himself because i'm guessing that somebody like fanon and i didn't watch his video i'm guessing that fanon would have questioned whether crawford was going to beat kelbrook to begin with i think he would have held fast with the opinion of his surrogate bftb who i uh saw recently and i haven't watched his video since but um i saw that he made a video in the car getting all worked up working himself up again in response to somebody who said that he picked kelbrook before the fight and you know get went in went into another tirade of bitch ass nigga bitch ass nigga bitch ass nigga you are a bitch ass nigga you know how he does but that being said you know mr julu so let's see some responses it says he was a 7-1 underdog and his home trainer said he was on his last leg. A lot of people said that. W-Y-M. All right. Uh, I said he wasn't washed up, but I can admit he looked like Tyrone Woodley. They look great on camp and are in shape. Well, listen, I don't want to read on them. Listen go into every little detail so as like i said i'm going to employ some brevity when i get into these comments and the uh subsequent comments that appear underneath the main comments themselves so if they're worth it then fine if it's a good conversation is fine so what's the next one we have here this the same dude okay yeah so this is what i say this is what i saw that actually this is what convinced me alongside some others that made me think okay you know what i think for once i think people are starting to his audience it doesn't mean that they're really calling him out but they're they're seeing for some of his bullshit here all right and i thought okay why not make a video about it it is what it is we don't have to talk about or listen to a single word he says because we know where he's gonna go and it's very hard to take anyway you know what i mean i've got a vomit bag close by so um what was he say where were we yeah this is the same dude that said Crawford would get robbed. Okay, so this was his opinion. Yes, I remember now. He said that, apparently he said that Crawford would get robbed and was scared of a conspiracy theory 
that Bob Aaron would fix the fight against Crawford because it's his last fight at top rank. And now he's saying Kelbrook is shot and gone. These casual fans are crazy. So I, I remember seeing that and I thought, oh, is that what we was trying to say? Is this why I say this guy's a bit, he's, he's very, very dangerous. You know what I mean? Put that kind of nonsense out there without any evidence. It's like, oh yeah, dead people were voting in the election. You know, you know how they do. Anyway, I bet that somebody just got angry and said, yeah, they did. Moving on. He said, first two round info gathering, third round tested how he took a punch. Fourth round, he killed him. Brooke was sitting dark from the beginning. I don't know why you all thought he had a chance, okay? And then says, you're never going to give him respect. Let's see some comments that come underneath that. So, he's talking about the people that follow this guy. I respect Bud. I'm an Errol Spence fan. <laughs> okay, let me just leave it. Okay, let me read one underneath that. This is the third straight European Crawford has fought. Crawford has yet to fight a black man. Oh, dear God. All right. Okay. Okay. We're going to go black into some black ethno-nationals in there. You know what I mean? It's always the same shit. Uh, it's a bit like the Mexicans. He hasn't fought a Mexican like me, man. He hasn't fought a Mexican who can move. You know, same old shit. I, I swear the world the world is fucked up. And moving on, it says like uh, exactly as soon as Kel got hit, he was gone. That wasn't a good Kel Brook at all. Well, he gave the impression of being a good one. It is what it is. And quite frankly, even I, if I'm being honest, absolutely honest here, I looked at him and took a good look at him on the scales when he flexed at the weigh in. And it looked quite good. It looked almost as if they 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 um, they trained to perfection. That he was at his optimal. Now I looked at his face afterwards, and he looked a bit old to me. But in as much as I was looking when he flexed his his muscles, he looked absolutely fucking perfect. Dare I say? I gotta be honest. He looked perfect, but I knew he was gonna lose anyway because he's shit. But he did look the part. He did look the part. I was actually back of my mind thinking like, has he has he been drug tested? Because he looked great. <laughs> All right. And he can box apparently. He can actually, you know. He can, but he's a front runner as they say. Moving on. It says, dude sound, dude, sound like you hate to give Bud any credit. You're nowhere near objective. So this is his audience. Oh, I'm not sure though. It could be somebody coming out of the out of nowhere. You know when they're objective, but continue to ride Spence. So he does not. He does know him. He does know him. I'm sure you'll be making excuses when Bud beats him too. Uh oh, that's gonna set some people off. Let's see some responses to that. Let's see some responses to that. Bud was getting outboxed. Kel was weight drained. <laughs> I had no punch resistance. So you don't think that Kelbrook was weight drained against er Errol Spence, right? He didn't even want to take that fight immediately after. Kelbrook, look, Errol Spence particularly forced the matter because he knew that was a good time to catch him coming back down from 160. It is what it is, though. You know what I'm saying? This time around, he had uh, he had ample time to uh, re acclimatize himself to the 147 division. And he looked perfect. I gotta be honest. Uh, he didn't look like he was, you know, gaunt or anything like that. He just looked like they like they'd done it perfectly. Like they'd done the nutrition perfectly. Uh, I'm not talking about his face. His face looked a bit aged compared to uh, compared to uh, Crawford, but body wise, he looked like he was uh, made out of caramel marble. I gotta be honest. He looked fantastic. You know, it is what it is. Okay, move. Let, let, let's uh, let's cut that. All right. It says Keith fought Danny and Sean, but you all didn't take any. You all didn't take any credit from Errol for those fights, but you're doing that for Bud's win tonight against Brooke. LOL. All right. It says just give the man his props. You on bullshit. I saw that too. I saw that too. Now, what's this one say? I had Brooke up 3-0 until the TKO. He was boxing beautifully, but he launched into Bud's right jab, trying to land a, a right of his own. Listen, people talk as if, like, one of the greatest fighters of our generation, regardless of whether you like him or not, 
didn't used to lose about two rounds at least. So let's say that on this occasion, Tess Crawford lost about three rounds before he actually knocked the motherfucker out. And that's a problem for these guys. You know what I'm saying? That's a problem for these guys. Oh, <laughs> he wasn't boxing beautifully as such, but he was sort of getting the better. And he was bigger. And he had a good jab. And he was well prepared mentally and physically. But there's only so far you can go. You know, all honesty. You know what I mean? That's, it was simply a case, as far as I'm concerned, with, ter- with, um, with um, not Ter Crawford, um, Kel Brook, where you're ambition far supersedes your capability and your talent as a matter of fact you know what i'm saying there's just i mean i don't want to say levels as such but it's just well there's just a drop that occurs naturally you know what i mean to people like kel brook or any fighter but they gotta sell the fight somehow anyway it says kel court spends with way more jabs that's true Kel absolutely outboxed Errol Spence. People, people want to ignore that fact. It really pisses me off. And it pisses me off because I'm being honest. I'm not, uh, well, I'm not going to say I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not Errol Spence hater. I'm just not really fond of the guy. I'm not, that, I'm not convinced that he's more than what people make him out to be. I think he's a black Golovkin. Okay, I th- that's what I honestly believe. I think he's a black Golovkin. He doesn't show me sh- nothing. It, not, not just in, it, it, in terms of the way he fights, but even his choice of opponents. Golovkin would fight somebody like a Van Herden. Golovkin would fight somebody like a Mikey Garcia coming up two weight classes as he did with Kelbrook. The similarity is uncanny. Yet they're giving this much credit to make it seem like he's some kind of boxing god. It's bullshit. Barely got past his real competition. You know what I'm saying? Where Golovkin failed, they gave him a pass. What I mean is that where Golovkin failed against Canelo Alvarez, they gave him a pass against Sean Porter. And now they want to use Sean Porter as a, some, some sort of blockade, some kind of trap door that won't allow Terce Crawford to get to this man that they worship so much. And they've just convinced himself. I don't, I don't even understand it. They've just really convinced themselves. I'm not even sure it's pure. I've probably got to give somebody else who associates with these people a lot of credit because he's really mindfucked these people into believing that they must support Errol Spence no matter what. That's some bullshit. That's some bullshit. I've even got more respect for the leader of this organization that they're with. And I don't even fuck with that nigga. I, nah, fuck that. I don't want to say that because, you know. Uh, let me say I have more respect for his ability to actually be honest from time to time to time. And if I'm not mistaken, the guy that has actually influenced a lot of these people to become fucking chronic Errol Spence fans, I'm pretty certain if I ever go watch his video that he will be honest in his breakdown. Most likely. Because that's one thing I can probably give that guy credit for. I'll say him, the one in Texas. I can honestly say that I haven't checked him yet, but if I were to check him, in fact, let's do it. Let's go check him. No, I'm not going to do it because he might block me. I think he's one of them kind of people, man. You know what I'm saying? It'll just block me. So, But I'm pretty certain if I go check his video, the one they call Black, down in Texas, if I check his video, he'll probably give an honest assessment despite the fact that he's a Spence fan. Unlike this guy here. But you know what? It is what it is. How long we spent? We spent 17 minutes. I think that's just about enough. Uh, I think I can let it go. You've seen that a lot of people aren't really riding with this dude. But still needs to take the yellow brick. Oh, I saw this. Yeah, yellow brick going to PBC. Maybe, maybe. Side of the street. But that's what it's really about, really, though. It's not necessarily about how he fights or what kind of fighter he is. You know what I'm saying? And when he gets to PBC, they're going to block him anyway. I think uh, the assessment that that Timothy Bradley gave is actually quite honest and true. Because l- let's say, like, he gets to PBC... And then, just like um, El Spence, his voice and his disdain for Keith Thurman, he starts thinking, you know what? I actually don't like El Spence. I ain't going to fight you. It is what it is. Then what? Because that's more or less the attitude he's taken towards Keith Thurman, isn't it? It's not like, you know, because you're on PVC, you gain access to this fight. 
You know what I'm saying? There was something quite telling, something that people chose to ignore during the uh, the media conference call. And this is where you go. This is where Edu Garcia needs to be kept away from because he tells the truth in as much as the boxing business is concerned. When they asked him, when the, when that 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 um, journalist, that it was, you know, it wasn't necessarily as bad a question as people. It's just that Angel Garcia was getting a bit touchy about it. He said, "Like, did you see anything in the fight with Mikey Garcia that you could take advantage of?" Now, keep bear in mind that prior to anybody making a big deal, well, I'm not saying anybody, but prior to anybody who might have uh, felt that. Errol Spence didn't learn anything from, oh, sorry, any any opponent of Errol Spence might, might not have learned anything from the fight that he had with uh, Mikey Garcia. Mikey, Errol Spence fans were promoting the idea that Errol Spence showed everybody that he could box. That was a showcase of Errol Spence's boxing. A bit like what was supposed to happen with Javante Davis against Leo Santa Cruz, but that didn't necessarily go according to plan because I think this is going to be a problem with Javante Davis he reverts back to type and relies on his power he hasn't got time you know what I mean he wants to go back and party so you know he's got, not getting paid for overtime what that fight really was I mean hey he worked out in the end the knockout was sensational okay it's almost as sensational as what you got with uh, Terrence Crawford here actually yeah almost but because of the opponent you could say that they were lacking in different ways different aspects but it is what it is that's by the by what i'm trying to highlight is this is that angel garcia said that they didn't learn anything from that fight because that was easy money for spence and they wanted that fight because it was going to be easy money for them and that's the blatant con involved behind that fight and you know what Angel Garcia just let the cat out of the bag like that. And everybody just quickly turns around because, you know, it's a dirty little secret that everybody knows. Anyway, let's uh, let's read a few more. What's it say? How are you going to say Brooke was free up and a washed up, washed fighter in the same sentence? Well, he can say that. I mean, I don't think that's a contradiction in terms as such, because what he probably would like to say is that, you know, he did sort of stay on point, stay on a message when he says that uh, Crawford not ready doesn't look ready for Spence and Porter so you can't really say that those two comments contradict each other as such you can place them juxtapose each other not necessarily feel that they are in fact paradoxical they're not you know what I'm saying <laughs> or you know or oppose each other you know juxtaposedly opposing each other or whatever no, but that being said that being said um they people can see through the transparent hatred that this guy seems to have for, I, I don't even understand that what's going on i mean for none you need to take it easy though for none, you need to take it easy man for none looks white though jesus christ for none looks like a white man man for none looks like a it looks like a trump supporter you know what i mean fuck donald trump he looked like a trump supporter man Anyway, goodbye everybody.